What is going on, people? This is White Rice here coming to you for another top 10 countdown list. Now, this is going to be the top 10 movies of the summer of 2016, and since it is Labor Day, which marks the end of the summer season, really, I figure I'd do this list. Now, I did a list similar to this last year, but it really didn't grab that much attention, and I figure, you know, I want a second chance at it, so I'm gonna, I decided to do this list again this year, but only this time, I'm going to do something a little bit different. This time, since I had more time to see movies this summer, I figure I would include an honorable mentions list. Movies that I really liked this summer, but didn't, didn't quite enough make it to the top 10. The reasons being whether they, you know, whether it be for production length time, or whether it be some of the pacing or writing issues. You know, these are still very fine movies, but just not top 10 worthy. And starting off with the first entry in the honorable mentions is Suicide Squad. Now, unlike Batman vs. Superman, this is a pretty decent DCEU film, and I did like it better than a lot of other people or what critics thought of it, but you know, it is a very fine movie in my opinion. Not a masterpiece by any sort of the means, but it's still a very decent, very, you know, surprisingly, you know, comedic, you know, superhero movie. Not entirely laugh out loud like Deadpool, but it has its moments. So yeah, if you haven't seen Suicide Squad, I'd recommend maybe you go check it out. Alright, another movie that I kind of like this summer is Star Trek Beyond. Now, do I think this movie is as good as, like, say, the original Star Trek by J.J. Abrams from 2009? Not necessarily, but it is, you know, from Justin Lin's uh, handling of the, fan of the franchise, I feel like it's a decent take at it. You know, let's see if they make a fourth film, since, you know, this movie did not do as well in the box office as the first two movies in the reboot franchise. So, let's see. I, I'm very more curious to see where the Star Trek goes in the future, but yeah, overall, pretty solid film. Alright, next we have X-Men Apocalypse, a movie that, you know, is pretty controversial since, you know, a lot of critics and a lot of fans were disappointed by this movie after seeing the after seeing X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, I did quite like this movie. In fact, I liked it better than Days of Future Past, to tell you the truth, because I had some issues with that movie. But yeah, X-Men Apocalypse, is it perfect? Again, like Suicide Squad, no it isn't, but you know... It is a pretty decent, like, superhero movie, and, you know, I had a pretty fun time with it as a popcorn flick, really. Alright, another movie that a lot of you will probably be surprised won't make the list is uh, Captain America Civil War. Now, a lot of you must be thinking, oh, Ian, alright, Rice, why isn't Civil War in the top ten? You know, as much as I love Civil War and as much as I love the Marvel extended Marvel Cinematic Universe, my problem with Civil War has to be in its runtime. Yeah, this movie's nearly two and a half hours long. You know, I didn't really think it needed to be that long. Again, it's a great movie. It's like, I love everything about it. But, you know, my issues with it is just, you know, if they could have cut down the length of time by maybe like 20 minutes, it would have probably made, like, you know, my top 10. And finally, the last movie to be on my honorable mentions list is a film called Don't Breathe. Now, the reason why I put Don't Breathe on here is because, you know, I found it to be, you know, a pretty exciting horror movie. You know, it always kept me on the edge of my seat. And for goodness sake, they didn't use jump scares. Ugh. The reason why this movie didn't make the list is, well, it could have easily made the list, but there's one movie in the top ten that, you know, I really wanted to put on there. And you'll see why. So, without further ado, people, let's get on to the top ten. Kicking this list off at number 10, we have Swiss Army Men. This uniquely and this original movie from A24 is a movie that, you know, I didn't expect to be released at this time of the year because, you know, it seems kind of too quirky and seems kind of too, well, original for the summer at least. But, you know, it surprisingly works very well. I mean, you know, you would think of a movie like this that it would be too pretentious and that you would be too overrated by the critics and the audiences wouldn't get it. But surprisingly enough, I feel like this is a very relatable movie to audiences and that, you know, I feel like that if I didn't include this movie on the list, I feel like that, you know, I'd be doing a disservice to not only myself, but to you guys, the audience out here. Because Swiss Army Man, honestly, is probably the most original movie that has come out so far in 2016. So please, guys, if you have the chance to, go check this movie out on home, movie out on home media, because it'll be worth your time. Alright, number nine is The Nice Guys. Now, this movie shouldn't really be a surprise on the list, because honestly... You know, for, if you remember my review of The Nice Guys, you know that I very much love this movie. 
Because honestly, who doesn't? The writing is spot on. The set pieces are spot on. The acting is just absolutely great in this movie. I mean, you know, the way they are able to combine action and comedy, you know, I feel like, you know, they really set it straight. I mean, you know, Shane Black, honestly, you know, I hope this dude gets more work, honestly, because after his brilliant direction in Iron Man 3 in this movie... I feel like there's no reason why this movie should have not done well at the box office. But of course, you know, the, the, let me say this to you audience members. If you think that there are no original movies in Hollywood anymore and that they go by the same movies over and over again, let me just say this to you. There are original movies out there. You just got to make sure to go out and see them because they are out there and they are pretty good, but they're not getting the attention they need. Why? Because all of you people think that they don't exist and instead go for these big market budget movies. Now, don't get me wrong, I see the big budget market and big market movies too. But I also make sure to mix in some originals too. So people, please, go see Swiss Army Man, go see the Nice Guys because they're both really good movies. Yes. Now, coming in at number 8, we have the movie Nerve. Now, this movie is surprisingly philosophical. And what I mean by surprisingly philosophical, I mean the way this movie was marketed was being a stupid, dumb, teenage action film that, you know, was probably something that adults would have hated and that, you know, only like middle schoolers would have enjoyed. But surprisingly enough, I really like Nerve. I love the action. I love the writing, surprisingly. Yes, they don't try to cater to the teen audience so much. Oh my god, I'm so sick of marketers just trying to pander to teen audiences. Here, it feels like it was written by teens and not in the dumb, immature way. So yeah, Nerve People, I've already done a review about it, going over it. If you want my full thoughts on it, I can link you my review in the below. But otherwise, Nerve, it was a, it was a great underrated film of, tw of the summer and I suggest you go see it. Alright, number seven is the movie Central Intelligence. Now, when I first went to go see this movie in the theaters, I thought it was going to be, you know, a mediocre action comedy that would be, you know, something to kill the time by. But well, I was really surprised by the chemistry between Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart. Because, man, is this movie hilarious. And, you know, it also packs in a lot of good punches, too. You know, the villain may be kind of weak. But, you know what? I just love the chemistry between the two main leads so much that, you know, I really didn't care. And if you guys have seen Central Intelligence, you know that, you know, it really works well as an action comedy. And, you know, it goes from a couple cliche points, but, you know... They're decent cliches, so guys, go check out Central Intelligence. I think it's a, one of the bigger sleeper hits of the year. Alright, number six is Sausage Party. Now, I don't need to be the first one to say it, but Sausage Party was absolutely hilarious. You know, is it the best animated movie of the year? No, but I think it's one of the funniest animated movies of the year. I mean, you know, you take a concept... you. Like, I, don't, I think this is really the first time that there's been a Pixar parody, and if this isn't the first time, it's the first one that's been done right, I gotta say. Because, you know, they just... Sausage Party, what I like about it is that, you know, it takes so many risks, and so many of them pass through. So, people, if you haven't gone see Sausage Party, go see that out now. Although, I would recommend that you would be at least 17 or older to go see this movie, because there is a lot of inappropriate moments in this movie and to somehow the parents who are watching this video please don't go take your kids to see it just because it's animated doesn't necessarily mean it's clean oh, Jesus Christ okay all right coming in at number five we have the lobster now some of you may be surprised that I put the lobster this low on the list now the reason why I put it at a uh, you know a cracking fi number five it's because, well, I gave this movie a 10 out of 10. The rewatchability factor of this movie is some of the is at the one of the lowest points since like maybe the movie Schindler's List. Now the reason why the rewatchability is so low is that while the philosophical meaning behind it is powerful and the acting is great, the film is just so dark and the ending is just so bizarre that, you know, I feel like I wouldn't want to watch this again. Not especially like, you know, with my friends on a Friday night with pizza and soda. Yeah, it's not that kind of movie, people. It's the kind of movie that you watch to really think about your life over. You think about like, you know, is my relationship worth anything? Or think about society. It's one of those kind of movies. And I'm very glad 
And I, the reason why I gave it a 10 is because, you know, you usually don't see those kind of movies in the summertime. Like, I saw this in June. Like, this is something you would see in, like, you know, November, for example, or, like, March. In fact, this movie was supposed to come out in March in the U.S. But yeah, anyhow, The Lobster, if you have seen it, you know, uh, you know, if you have seen it, let me know in the comments below. But if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But I don't recommend you watch it a second time, at least. All right, number four, speaking of which, laying the bait for number four, we have The Shallows. Now, this movie is probably my favorite horror movie of the summer. Like, you know, if you want to know a movie that's better than Don't Breathe. Now, surprisingly enough, The Shallows, I wasn't expecting much when I first heard about this movie. Because I went to go see this movie with a friend of mine who was a big horror aficionado. And I went to, and my friend and I were the only two ones in the theater, so, you know, we could scream or we could, you know, laugh as much as we want. Well, we didn't really laugh, but... You know, but anyhow, with The Shallows, you know, I really like this movie. I love the tension. I love the acting, especially by Blake Lively. But the one thing I love most about this movie is cinematography. I mean, goddamn, is the cinematography Oscar worthy here? I mean, if it doesn't get, like, at least an Oscar nomination, I don't know what is wrong with the Academy. So please, people, go check out The Shallows if you haven't already. All right, number three is Finding Dory. And, yep, this is... Yep, I know, cliche, cliche, you put Finding Dory on the list. And why couldn't I? And, you know, obviously I put Finding Dory on the list. It's a really good sequel to a really good movie, Finding Nemo. Now, Finding Dory is lighthearted. I like it a lot. I don't really need to say much about it, honestly. But I'm going to say this. It's not my favorite animated movie of the year. Which brings us to number two, which is Kubo and the Two Strings. This is my favorite animated movie of the year. You know, I already did a review about Kubo talking about everything I love about it, so let me just say this again. Kubo and the Two Strings, I think, is not only the most beautifully animated movie I've seen all year, one of the best written, one of the best voice acted, you know, everything about this movie just works. I mean, unlike Sausage Party, which has a cliche plot, well, you know, every plot is cliche if you really think about it, but you know, the plot of that, you know, was eh, and, you know, also the animation was eh, but... I mean, what really works for Sausage Party was the humor, but with Kubo and the Two Strings, everything is at its A game. I mean, you know, you would think, oh, why not Finding Dory? Everything was at its A game. Yeah, I mean, Finding Dory was at an A game, but Kubo and the Two Strings was at an A plus game, I gotta say, because everything here, I feel like, was well crafted with love. Everything was precision with care. Honestly, Kubo and the Two Strings, in my eyes, is a modern day masterpiece. And I feel like if you guys haven't gone and seen Kubo and the Two Strings, what are you doing? Go out and see it, people. It's absolutely amazing. But my number one favorite movie of the summertime, it is Now You See Me Too. Now, for a lot of you people out there, you may be surprised by this entry, but for some of you who know me pretty well, this shouldn't be come as much of a surprise. Now, let me explain why I'd put a movie like this at number one. Back in 2013, my friend and I went to go see the original Now You See Me in theaters. We loved it very much for how much for how it could display magic tricks in such an interesting and clever way. We also loved the acting, the writing, and the fast-paced action. So when we heard that there was a sequel coming out, we were very excited for this movie. Now, usually sequels are not as good as the first editions of a movie. And again, if you've noticed on my list so far, there's only been one other sequel, which was Finding Dory. And you know, sequels tend to be usually disappointing, usually like, you know, mediocre. But when I went to go see Now You See Me 2, it was not only better than the original, but I think it was the best film of the summer, because I'll tell you why. I came out of this movie more entertained than I had been in a very long time. Now there's two